Hello, Anin Shakon. We join you today from Takaranto, near the shores of Nigani Gichigama, or Lake Ontario, to share with you current work of the Great Lakes Research Alliance for the Study of Aboriginal Arts and Cultures, or GRASAC for short. Presenting today are settler scholars, Heidi Boaker and myself, Kara Kompadic, co-directors of GRASAC and associate professors at the University of Toronto, Heidi in history and Kara in museum studies. The focus of our presentation represents a combined team effort to synthesize and articulate desired changes, to coordinate and manage multiple moving parts, to investigate design and code solutions, and to secure funding for the work. We want to acknowledge the essential contributions of our team members and co-authors, Sotira Chrysanthides, Bradley Clements, Richard Lauren, Priya Muragaya, and Victor Tarchenko. So Tara, Bradley, Priya, and Victor are also based at the University of Toronto, which occupies traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, Seneca, and Huron-Wendat. Richard is based in Winnipeg, Treaty One territory, and homelands of the Métis Nation. We have emerged out of winter here in Toronto. The maple sugar has flowed from the trees and we are fully in spring. It's becoming increasingly green and as shoots appear in our gardens and leaves unfurl on trees, we are reminded of all the things plants share with us, food, shade, medicine. And we are reminded to not take these plants for granted, but to care for them and to care about them. As noted, the work we are sharing today is in service to the Great Lakes Research Alliance. Since 2005, over 500 people have been members of GRASAC all sharing a willingness and a desire to learn with and from cultural belongings and material heritage. Wampum, birch, bars, birch baskets, beaded bags, treaty documents and medals, photographs, fishing mirrors, maple sugar spiles. GRASAC's members are based in Indigenous nations, museums and archives and universities throughout the Great Lakes and globally helping us fulfill our desire to be a multidisciplinary research network whose members cooperate to locate, identify, and create deeper understanding of Great Lakes arts, languages, identities, and governance. As you can see in the top photograph here, we organize group visits to collections, and in the bottom photograph, an image of us hosting an in-community research conference and workshop. We also host digital exhibitions, offer mobile community research kits for digital cultural heritage work on the land, and maintain a database of cultural belongings. It is the database of cultural belongings, the GRASAC Knowledge Sharing System, or GKS, that we will be focusing on today. And in particular, its transformation from a password protected site to a publicly accessible web platform. The GKS digitally reunites Great Lakes heritage items that are scattered across museums and archives. This reunion can entail identifying cultural belongings that were once together, but now separated across vast geographies. For example, a jacket held in a British museum with its matching leggings held in an American museum. But the reunion also seeks to create channels for information sharing so that descendants whose relatives made and used these items know where they are and that the Indigenous knowledge practices and languages are reconnected with these items. This is achieved by reproducing and augmenting the records of cultural institutions with GRASAC members' photography, research, interpretations, and linguistic interventions. The GKS adds fields not in use in museum or archival catalogs to prompt consideration of Indigenous knowledge practices. Fields, for example, that account for seasonal and ceremonial time, not only chronological time. We will share more about the GKS throughout the presentation. To start though, we want to develop the idea of generations from our title. It's an important concept for multiple reasons. First, we acknowledge that our work is intimately tied to the lands and waters of the Great Lakes, a place where there are deep and enduring alliances amongst indigenous nations. Many of these alliances have been maintained over multiple generations through ongoing work and commitment, inherited and enacted from one generation to the next. 
the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, for example, is regarded, regarded as the oldest participatory democracy. The dish with one spoon wampum predates Canadian Confederation and is actively maintained by Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee nations into the present. There are also faltering, if not failed, alliances between Indigenous and settler nations, an issue we return to at the end of the presentation. More immediately, we are keenly aware that Grassack is entering a second generation. Individuals who worked as research assistants in the early days of Grassack are now curators and assistant professors. Founders of Grassack are now retired. Elders have passed. Emerging artists and language learners see potential in our work. We also feel the generational shift in technology as our Drupal 7 platform reaches end of life, as we rework our websites to meet Provincial Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act and international web content accessibility guideline standards. And also as we create our mobile community research kits so that cutting edge digital infrastructures are distributed and equitable rather than reliant on being in a research intensive urban university environment. And we also feel a generational shift in attitudes, expectations, and digital activities among all our members, but especially among Indigenous members and staff in cultural institutions. In 2005, when GRASAC began, there was tremendous uncertainty on the part of both Indigenous nations and museums who each feared exploitation of intellectual property in the largely unregulated space of the internet. Our password protected database reflects the early desire among both groups that images and knowledge not be disseminated without some forms of control. Beginning in 2017, Indigenous members of GRASAC vocalized a need for young people in particular to be able to access the knowledge within the GKS without barriers. The potential for the GKS to be used in language learning and for its images to inspire artists were raised often. It was also the case that museums holding Great Lakes cultural belongings were posting their records online with greater detail and higher resolution images. The Smithsonian and the British Museum even to the, took the approach of producing open access online catalogs. If we maintained the GKS as it was, we risked becoming gatekeepers of knowledge. Instead, we wanted to maintain our commitment to knowledge building through alliance and to communicate Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee notions of responsibility, both individual and collective, for knowledge transmission. Heeding Kim Kristen's question, does information really want to be free? We are seeking ways to participate in an open access environment while upholding Indigenous sovereignty. Recently, University of Michigan graduate student Alexandra Rayburn described GRASAC as a knowledge infrastructure comprised of a robust network of people, artifacts, and institutions with shared knowledge practices. Her analytical focus on infrastructure rather than alliance enabled her to focus on this moment of generational change. And we agree that after 17 years as a research alliance, GRASAC provides important opportunities to understand the long-term needs, challenges, and possibilities for digital humanities research. I'm going to turn it over to Heidi to develop these concepts further. Thank you, Kara. As um, uh, Kara acknowledged at the beginning of the presentation, uh, we're in spring now, and mindful of an impact on the uh, the importance of plants. I'd also like to acknowledge the climate impact though of our digital infrastructures, the energy for cooling and power, minerals for the hardware. These have real impacts on the land and the ensouled beings who call this landscape home. And terms that we're talking about today in, in the realm of the digital terms like cloud and the internet, mass can make fuzzy what is actually uh, physical and with real world impacts. Some of the other challenges we have uh, as an IT or a digital humanities project in its multi-generational uh, iterations as we are working through this uh, is that our work is also, uh, as everyone else's, is work is, is also challenging in a digital ecosystem that has been intentionally designed for entropy and obsolescence. 
we have new software continually, new patches to that software. The old code becomes obsolete and requires expensive redevelopment and redeployment. When we first started also in the early 2000s on this project, we used a product called MySQL. We hired students to help us with the work and I even was able to help debugging some of the code. But this do-it-yourself approach uh, has really yielded to a maturation in the, the world of software development, maturation methodologies and professionalism, and of course, new uh, user design uh, skills that are requir require us now to hire uh, professional developers. And so this changing um, uh, digital ecosystem as well as it brings forward new possibilities for us in terms of displaying and uh, sharing the research that we have has also uh, increased the, the cost and the complexity and made it uh, more difficult to maintain. And within that, of course, are also funding model limitations. We face as uh, researchers based in a university environment, the challenge of securing grant funding uh, for ongoing uh, project work. And while it is relatively easy to locate um, funding for projects uh, that are being initiated that are new, our granting agencies haven't really kept up with the costs uh, and the uh, budget categories to allow us to apply for grant funding uh, for ongoing maintenance and support of projects like GRASAC. Of course, there's also the continually evolving and new technologies uh, and in innovative digital environments that we're seeing now, including a virtual reality and uh, metaspheres. And we're seeing also Indigenous scholars, researchers moving into these spaces in really creative and innovative ways, places like AbTech and Imaginative Festival here in Toronto with gaming spaces. And so the expectations also on a project like ours are how to engage with this ever-changing world, this uh, 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 digital technology in a way that makes what we're doing current and fresh and accessible to younger generations as well. Um, we face technical challenges too. I, uh, of course, we talked about the maturation and the software development model and the obsolete uh, software, uh, but we, we had specifically chosen Drupal in 2009 as our content management system. And of course, that's the other challenge of working in digital humanities. Once you make a commitment to a particular platform, you are embedded in that platform and that, uh, um, and moving to a new one uh, has all kinds of uh, additional challenges. Our existing um, knowledge sharing system, the one we currently have, has a lot of custom code. And we're finding, again, as we move to develop a new system in Drupal 9, um, we are having to make design choices about the display of, uh, in our, uh, of our records to eliminate custom code, but of course, further constraining then what we can do by what's, uh, what the technology allows us uh, to do. In our communities, we really learned, um, first of all, and have had to reflect on the privilege of working in a university environment that's connected to other universities by uh, high-speed fiber optic networks and living in major urban centers that allows us to access these resources. But the reality is that's also not true for most of the community member nations who belong uh, to GRASAC and participate in it. And it's really telling um, wherever you look in the Great Lakes, um, this is just a map of high-speed internet service availability in uh, Southern Ontario. Uh, right now, the areas in blue are First Nations land, and you can see how underserviced those communities are in terms of high speed internet availability and how well served we are in Toronto. Now, no, this is just about availability. This isn't about affordability. That is, this is the this map only shows whether you can purchase the service, not whether you have the funds to do it. Uh, so this is for high speed internet and the real spottiness there. Um, low speed or dial up access is available still in a, a much broader area. And this is a very current map, but you can see that even within our Great Lakes community networks, there are multiple First Nations communities who are part of GRASAC who simply don't have access to the internet in a way that would let them make adequate use of the resource. So that is another major challenge. Um, and so the, the final, just to wrap up the techn technical considerations, as we are uh, thinking through how we are redeveloping our product and our, our um, knowledge sharing database, one of the other issues we're thinking about is, is, as Kara said, moving from the gatekeeper to providing the data, 
But as we do that, we need to think through how people will use and repurpose our data. This is becoming a much more um, uh, common phenomenon. At that, I'm going to send it back to Kara. Thanks, Heidi. Um, we have taken up this notion of a sort of a generational approach to also help us think through solutions and possibilities for this next phase. In many and, and multiple ways, Grass Act members have used um, approaches that imagine and enact generations outside a technological sphere. Um, and so with heritage items, for example, Grass Act members have developed a methodology of visiting that takes its cue from the rhythm, pace, and reciprocity of visiting with a family member. And the impetus for research itself has often been articulated within GRASAC in terms of a multi-generational need for cultural recovery and recuperation. And after generations of colonial assimilation and violence, there's an active search and rescue mission happening in cultural institutions, reclaiming and reactivating Indigenous rights responsibilities and knowledges with a clear intention to unsettle Indigenous futures and redirect the trajectory of Indigenous histories. More recently, Grassack has taken up the question of how concepts of generation can manifest in its digital work. We've taken up the notion that cultural records are surrogates, and Grassack is reapproaching the data structures and content that make up the GKS with this in mind. So at its best, surrogacy creates an environment that nurtures the growth of new life. So how then can the back end architecture and the front end interface and the content of records be designed in ways that support Indigenous lives and the well being of new generations. Initially within the GKS individual GRASAC members had editorial authority for a record. This was an effort to refrain from reproducing an institutional voice mm -hmm. and also recognition that the content in a GKS record was the result of ongoing research. An editor for a record could designate additional persons to update content, but ultimately they took up a responsibility to ensure accuracy of the information shared and even whether a record would be visible within the GKS itself. This was well worth the experiment in terms of acknowledging that named people are involved in knowledge production, that even knowledge from within cultural institutions has origins in the actions of people. Um, and yet this model didn't anticipate the need for a new generation of people to care for this information. So thinking in generations, we now realize that Grassack has to take collective responsibility for records in the GKS. To do so, we are preparing to have data curators who will work as a team and will work with individual members to amend and augment existing records and to produce and include new records. And on the screen, you have um, a series of, of uh, individuals who represent a sort of a new generation of GRASAC and potential new data curators, as well as um, our co-authors, Bradley Clements and Richard Lauren. This collective approach allows us to make the most of fields and relations that are currently underutilized in the GKS. For example, some of the people on the screen here are connecting language items, Cayuga and Anishinaabemowin vocabulary with heritage items, which relies on consistency in data entry and management, as well as language skills and knowledge of cultural belongings. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Heidi to talk about some of the other ways that this notion of generations is creeping into our solutions. Absolutely. Well, uh, our younger generation, of course, are definitely encouraging us to move away from textual presentation, our word heavy approach to more visual spatial uh, uh, foci. Um, as well, we're exploring um, for example, moving away from a keyword search or a text-based browse to virtual maps of Great Lakes lands and waters, which put the items in our database back into a visual relationship to the lands from which they came, and which reflect also the multi-generational presence of Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and other Indigenous nations in the region. Uh, coming also from our, our members is a, 
uh, is thinking through the ways in which we could organize along a cyclical and seasonal ontologies. That is, uh, instead of thinking in terms of chronology, the way we can think about, um, we, we already have the ability to tag items based on their season, but to make that part of the search uh, functionality. And also to recognize that different indigenous ontologies have different seasons. So we have to move beyond the idea of, uh, and expand to include those additional seasons. Uh, furthermore, and speaking about generations, our database contains many historic photographs that were also taken in the period of salvage anthropology, and especially in the earlier part of the 20th century. And these photographs, for example, also need to be understood as family photos, part of the generations uh, that are interconnected in the GRASAC uh, database. As we plan for this new iteration of, of our, our database, we are pleased to see how uh, Drupal already embeds uh, multilingual support because we do envision very much want to be at a stage where a user will be able to log in to the GKS database and select Anishinaabemowin, select Kanakehea, select their language and have the, um, the labels and the, the database be in uh, indigenous language of the Great Lakes region. Meanwhile, we'll be doing this while we avoid customization because we've learned of the maintenance headaches of uh, too much custom code. Um, and we want to also ensure that our heritage item histories as we present them to our um, visitors to our site that, that the organ, they're not organized in such a way that prioritize or valorize the collector or the institution over the community from which the item came. This is challenging, of course, because in many instances, we don't yet know the source community or specific location of an item that's in an overseas uh, collection. But nevertheless, there's just different ways to think about reframing the way we present the history of these items uh, as almost a biogra biography in and of itself that the people will come to our site instead of seeing uh, records portrayed in such a way that are more similar to an institutional collections model, one that presents items in terms of its, um, as if one is visiting one's relatives. Now, to conclude our, our presentation here, the Great Lakes Research Alliance um, was conceived, actually we're getting up to almost two decades now, uh, conceived at a time and a way to put into practice some of the core ideas and principles in Great Lakes uh, diplomatic relationships and in the idea of alliance. And so we call ourselves consciously a research alliance because of that concept. And that means in picking up those ideas of alliance, we have to also then pick up our responsibilities to one another and to the data that we are um, uh, custodians of as we work to model the kinds of relationships that are possible in the part of settler nations towards indigenous nations and move towards a more just and more decolonial society. Thank you all for your attention today and your interest in GRASAC.